we're now on level two of red so what's happened here is we've managed to get up to um, eight trains per hour and so it's unlocked tier two and the first thing I've done is I've bought this stabling sensor because this really is the game changer for accepting more regional trains without doing all the nonsense sort of manual stuff that we were doing. So we currently have two regional trains. One stops in Mukobo and goes back into here. The other goes to Swobodski and goes down via the triangle and back round. And I've already added the stabling sensor. Now one thing to note, I'm just going to delete it because I'll do it, do them all again. One of the nice things about rail routes is you get all your money back when you um, when you get rid of things. Um, but when you have the shunting sensor and the stabling sensor unlocked, you can only use one on a platform. And it's a little bit confusing because they're very similar and the way that you use them is very similar. But a shunting sensor, I think you can actually put anywhere. I'm just gonna try that now so that you know. So that's the shunting sensor. So you can actually put a shunting sensor anywhere on an empty piece of track. Um, to trigger based on various conditions. So you could say trains coming in hitting a shunting sensor here that are heading backwards need to reverse back into platform one or some, something like that. Whereas a stabling sensor is only allowed to go in a platform. But if you have a stabling sensor in a platform, you can't put a shunting sensor in there as well. So just be aware of that. The stabling sensor only applies to uh, regional trains. So we're gonna build one now to show how they work. They cost the same, but I think um, that's slightly cheaper per cycle, $2,000 a cycle, that's $4,000 a cycle. Um, but it has to be in a platform. So we're using platform two at the minute for uh, stabling our trains. And we're using platform four down here. Now we could add one to all of the platforms, but then we'd have to configure all of them and it just takes more time. So we'll just stick with the two that we have for the moment and what we do is we click on it and this is important is it can trigger from trains going that way to hit this signal or trains going this way to hit this signal and there could be two different rules reason quite simply is if a train's coming in that way you might want it to reverse into sidings on this side if it's coming in that way you want it to reverse back the way it came or something like that so you need to know especially if your train is reversing is you need to add the rule to the signal that it's going to hit first as it comes into the station. So our train's coming down here, so we hit plus on this. And we've got some options here, so we can restrict it. Now we can't do this at the minute because we don't have um, locomotive coupling unlocked in our um, upgrades here. But what we can do if we want is we could say only apply this rule to trains going to a certain station next. Now in this case it probably doesn't matter because the only regional train we've got, there's only one of them, it's going to go out. But maybe if there was a train coming in here that is actually going back this way, then we might not want it to reverse into here. We might need it to go somewhere else or go around a loop or something like that. But for now we won't worry about that, we'll just leave it all um, to apply to all regional trains. And then these are the shunting commands that we've already seen and they work in the same way. So bearing in mind, we're adding it to this end. So we need to go to signal and then reverse. Uh, you can, for some reason you can't reverse straight away. You have to go to the signal first, which is a bit annoying. And then from there, this is the same as before. Go to our shunting group and reverse. And then wait for, in this case, we'll say three minutes is probably enough time. And then after three minutes, reuse the train and then head back to the platform that you're scheduled for. That icon only appears on one of the platforms, but it applies to any platform that's accessible from here, which is uh, platforms two and four. Um, but there's only one icon for that. So we can just click that. So that's there. Um, and it says, oh, yeah, that's right. Now that you're back into the platform, there's nothing else to do. So that's all fine. And then we do something similar down here, but using our triangle. So again, we're gonna hit this signal as we come in. And at the minute we can't filter it. It's gonna to apply to all trains that come into platform four because there's only one at the moment. S similar to above, go to the that end and reverse. Come back to this signal, reverse. Go to this signal, reverse, 
and then come back to here but we're not going to go to platform because we haven't reused the train we can either wait here to reuse it which then means the triangle isn't available for anybody else or we'll come back to the platform by going to signal and reverse and then we can reuse the train three minutes before it's due now now that we set those up um, our regional train should work fine and they're actually coming in quite soon so we can find out whether I've done it correctly uh, that's that one there it gets slightly blocked but I'm not worried at the moment about that so hopefully this should automatically do what we did before manually and what that means is currently I don't have to do anything all of my trains are automatic now all of the trains I've got on, on schedule so that's fantastic for me so that's the the stabling sensor but like I say stabling sensor only works for regional trains the shunting sensor is an interesting one because it does have a use for freight trains but freight trains have to stay at a platform so you can't shunt a freight train back into here if it's waiting for 20 minutes um, a shunting sensor is useful if you're going to uncouple the locomotive and run it round through another platform and back onto the other end however loco coupling is 30 xp and we, we've not got that many yet so we can't do that um, so the shunting sensor is I wouldn't say as useful um, as the stabling sensor but there are a few places where I have had to use it and it's usually if you have a station uh, there probably isn't really one here a station in a tricky position so I had one where um, you were at a station you were trying to get into a station that was kind of just behind it and it was there wasn't enough space to kind of have a big loop so what I did instead was I put a shunting sensor on the platform so trains heading to let's say Zakod for example would come in from here to platform 3 and then the shunting sensor would reverse them into Zakod so then when they left Zakod the locomotive was still at the front and it could carry on as usual so there are some uses to them like I say because you can put a shunting sensor anywhere the example that they give in the tutorial is they sort of with a triangle but you could trigger it on the entrance to the platform you could say if I'm coming into the station um, before I go to the platform if I'm got a locomotive at the front go into the triangle reverse reverse into the platform and then you're kind of ready to go but that's more useful for intercity trains um, that are going to leave immediately whereas with the regional trains you've kind of got time to move them with a stabling sensor anyway so the shunting sensor kind of works in a similar way I mean I guess I could show you what it looks like so if we put one say on platform three here so what you can do here is similar in as much as you need to say which signal is going to trigger it and you can have different rules for different ends so let's say train comes in from this end hits this signal we could say if it's heading to Zakod then we um, as the next visit for example or in some future visit whichever way you want to do it then what you could do is again I don't have the shunting signal set up but it would be similar go to signal reverse go to signal go to signal go to signal reverse come back again um, whatever reuse train or something so um, yeah there's a couple of different ways that you can use it but like I say I don't don't really use shunting sensors very often so that's that now if we look at the next thing tunnels um, tunnels are kind of interesting I don't use them very much um, but they can be useful one of the most useful th um, things for tunnels is this is a good example very busy junction and in order for my trains to go from here up to what's that called Mikhailov, Mikhailov um, they have to cross these two lines so I can put a tunnel under here instead but a tunnel does give us some limitations so for example um, a tunnel needs to have one length of track before you can start a tunnel so the tunnel would have to start here 
and it'd have to end here so there's one block of track on the other side of it but of course you can't put signals and things in the tunnel so then all of that stuff kind of breaks and if you don't have much space then they're not necessarily very useful but um one place where we could try and see if it will work i tend to have quite quite a lot of problems laying tunnels out but let's just oh broke my own rule pause it so let's say we want to go from here around to park technologiski however it's pronounced um and let's say we want to say come in I guess here so we've got our branch here our branch here and to connect it is obviously as easy as choosing the tunnel tool click in that end and then it will kind of auto route so that's sort of fine obviously at the minute I don't have the signaling to do it so I'd need to do the signaling but one thing that people do get confused about is when you first lay the track it's only 40 kilometers an hour so you have these really fast trains, they come around, they get to here and then they go do, 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 really slowly and then they speed up when they come out again. Um, and if you go into here and you try and sort of, you know, upgrade the track, like you can't, it looks a bit weird, but you can upgrade it, you just have to do it differently. So what you do instead is you hover over the end of it and if you see that little menu that comes up, it says if you want to upgrade the speed, um, so upgrade it to 80 c makes it that much if i want to upgrade it to 120 press c again and that's the same speed as the um as the track going into it now so you can do it just by hovering over the edge i'm not sure why you can't just click on it it might be because a tunnel can go underneath another track like it is here and maybe they just felt it would get too complicated so tunnels can be useful in some places but like i say um i'm fairly certain you can't put signals in the tunnel no so because you can't put the signals in the tunnel that sort of limits you a little bit um, and what it means is i probably need to have a relay sensor here and maybe I'd only use this for slow trains because that's not a great distance before this. Um, and then just say, you know, if a train does come through the tunnel and hits the relay sensor, then signal them through to that station. But of course, I still need something here because at the moment um, I've got no signal controlling that tunnel. So if I do that as well, again, it's the, the problem with the grid system is if you look here, no space, no space, no space, no space. So I'm kind of a bit messed up at the minute. The other thing I could do is I could take the, the track off in this direction, a few more kind of, you know, blocks. So I've got space for my signal and then I could run the tunnel from there. Um, but that's kind of my problem with tunnels really with the space restriction, um, you're kind of limited and as with all buildings you have to be really careful often when you put things down you'll find that the um some of the sensors here if their route has been affected then they'll break and a little question mark comes up and you have to go in and kind of reset things um that's actually a routing sensor oh that's for that signal anyway so that won't have changed that one seems happy so yeah we'll leave that for now oh in fact that is the routing sensor for this signal. So actually, I can set it up by doing that. Oh, that's nice. Right, something's happened here. Again, probably because I've been, oh, see that one there? Because I've been messing around with the tunnel, that's broken this. So that's, I need to fix that. And even though I've fixed it, I now need to send that one through so it can carry on as normal that's one of the biggest gotchas in this game a little change to track that you think is not even being used yet and all of a sudden everything else breaks uh, this is another thing that happens with routing so if my train's coming out of platform four when the train wants to leave platform two to come here it won't wait until this train's out of the way it kind of goes oh there's a route down here i could use instead however there is no sensor on that side of the track um, 
to do that so then that gets stuck and gets blocked up again now that wouldn't normally happen that only happened because of that freight train so I'm not going to do anything particularly significant at this point so yeah that's tunnels that's fairly straightforward um, the others we're going to need a few more points for so I will fast forward the video until we've got more points to unlock some more features whilst making the video for tier 2 red upgrades I noticed that I'd lost the video on locomotive coupling so I'm making another one the sound might be a little different and I'm using a different map but hopefully you will forgive me for that so just as a reminder we'll press play on this we're talking here about red tier 2 and we're talking about the loco coupling option and I did mention it before when we remember that freight trains regional trains and intercity trains all have a locomotive at one end only if they need to change direction then you've got some options like going around in a loop you can use a triangle to reverse or a triangle and regional trains the best one is to use regional train stabling in a coach yard because they can go in whichever direction and come out whichever direction you want and the turnaround bit just happens automatically which is really helpful so locomotive uncoupling and running locomotives around is much more common on freight trains than any other sorts of trains and this works in this case because um, when you have a train a freight train that's due to stay in a platform this is basically a goods yard so it's designed to have freight trains in there for a long period of time we can simply park this up in a, a particular platform and then we can use the various coupling and uncoupling um, mechanisms to turn that loco take it off one end move it down here across to here and back onto the other end um, I've just realized actually that this train terminates here so there'll be no locomotive stuff happening but this one I think will come in and do what we want it to do so in order to move the locomotive from one end to another what we need is we need a shunting sensor and what that shunting sensor will do if you remember when we talked about stabling sensors before is you need to trigger off the end signal that the train will basically get to if it carries on so this train's coming in from the right hand side so we need to add a rule to this end we could do something similar to this end but likely we would need to run the locomotive round a different way if we're going that way than if we're taking it off and going this way so that's why it allows you to configure it separately so for this one I've added specific stations so Ausfahrgroup is just here off the screen and Musach is down here but it is um, got to by going this way and around the little loop there so what I'm saying is if a train is heading to these stations but is entering or coming towards the signal you can see there I've chosen a locomotive at the front so that gets enabled um, with the locomotive coupling the reason is because locomotive coupling is the only thing that you can do stuff with a locomotive anyway so there's no point unlocking these until you have that feature but if I'm heading to those two stations and the locomotive is at the front which obviously most of the time it would be then do these things and these are just shunting commands like we've already seen but we get an extra one which is that so if I hit the edit button you can see that what I'm doing is I hit that icon there you see there's a little tiny number one in it which you probably can't see um, detach the loco then go to signal reverse go to signal go to signal reverse and then you hit that one there which is attach loco to train now once that happens then the rest of it happens automatically so I, we don't need the reuse train because this isn't a regional train the train doesn't lose its identity um, the, as soon as that locomotive is coupled on the rest of its journey is ready to go and the nice thing here is these trains are booked to stop at these stations for a long period of time anyway so you can see here it's um, scheduled to stop at Rangier Bahnhof for um, 18 minutes which is plenty of time to take the locomotive off so if I just speed that up a bit so it gets to the signal you'll see exactly what happens train stops as you would expect but the shunting sensor is triggered to take the locomotive off um, and it kind of 
does exactly <laughs> what you probably expect it to do goes there reverses goes to signal um, I've used platform 4 to run the locomotive through not for any particular reason I just thought I'd give myself um, a couple of platforms down here with shunting sensors on them and then just move the locomotive out the way um, so that yeah it's not going to conflict with these platforms you can see the same things happening here as well and then when it gets to this end it will do the same thing it will reverse it will come back and it will come and join on that train now one thing that is worth noting there is a bug and I'm not sure what causes it which is I'm not sure if it's when the game gets really busy or if there are lots of trains on the map or maybe because this is a large map if you have this train as well as the next hour's train on the map at the same time then sometimes this process breaks and when the locomotive attaches to the train instead of stopping like it has here so what, what you'll see will happen is this as soon as that departure is ready it will reverse immediately and it will go out the right hand side so that's what you expect to happen but when that sensor breaks the locomotive joins the train and then the whole thing moves this way and doesn't reverse automatically and it just sits at the signal and when that happens you then have to manually reverse it and usually like I say I think it happens when something goes wrong so usually once you do that a couple of times it will end up sorting itself out and it will start working again but you need to look out for that because if that happens and that train ends up stuck you can end up with a whole queue of freight trains you know sitting along a line here waiting to get in because there's one at the front that's blocking it and obviously the knock-on effect of that on all the other trains going around this enormous map um, can end up creating a very large mess for you to tidy up so locomotive coupling really useful this scenario I'm waiting in a station for 20 30 40 minutes plenty of time to swap the loco to the other end so I can reverse out obviously if I'm not reversing like this train is came in from the right it's going out on the left uh, it obviously doesn't need that so it doesn't have a shunting sensor on the middle two tracks it just allows me to pass straight through and that will leave in a minute and a half now theoretically you could do the same thing on an intercity train however you're adding usually at least three or four minutes that it's going to take you to run a locomotive round so that's a significant hit on the schedule of an intercity train so although you can do it within a city you probably won't usually do it and when it comes to regional trains the same thing because you normally have to turn the train round anyway um, it, there's usually better ways of doing that than trying to run the locomotive round bearing in mind that you will need to shunt and you will need to reuse the train um, but it will depend on how much space you've got this is obviously a massive um, freight station it's got room for shunting necks at all four corners if you were trying to do the same thing here or one that I was trying to work out how to do here where you're much more limited in space and you may or may not have room to get you know a locomotive of one end over here and back in um, or that bit works but you know it might not work if you're using this one instead so you might end up um, not having enough space to but it's quite a cool little thing to do and like I say mainly on freight and enables you to do yeah lots of stuff like you've seen here video I want to introduce urban transit trains which are kind of straightforward once you've got a few little bits um, once you understand a few little bits of it but if we just go in and choose urban transit contracts and install it the first thing that it's going to do is going to unlock a coach yard so when you unlock something for the first time you might have noticed you go into the build menu and the thing you've added sort of pops up like it just did there and again this is one of those things that costs ten thousand dollars per cycle so it's fifty thousand to buy ten thousand per hour to run which is kind of okay and you need to think carefully about where it's going to go so the rules are it has to be near a station a bit like if you put a dispatcher's office or conductor office you cannot put one at what we call a sink station so the sink stations are the ones that go off the edge of the map I'm not actually sure why that is if there's a, a good reason or if it's just to make things a little bit more interesting but 
in this case, it sort of makes sense to kind of put it at Vorstwaf uh, Glovny um, in the middle because there's lots of space around the edge of it and lots of spare platforms. So I've sort of built and unlocked all of these, but I'm only actually using, I think, those four platforms and these two down the bottom at the moment. So we've got a few spare platforms we can use for these trains. Um, and as with all routing in rail routes, you need to think about how to maximize the number of platforms that can actually reach the coach yard because if you can't get to it, then obviously you're limited to the platforms that you can use for your urban transit contracts. So for example, um, let's just grab some track here. It's only gonna be shunting track, so the 80 kilometer one will be fine, but um, we might as well uh, go crazy. So we could build one down here somewhere, up here, up here, up here. I think for now, we've got some space here. The coach yard itself only takes up one square, so it's, it's really kind of economical with space. But there are a few things that we need to do. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to come off of here like this. I'm just going to go a few blocks along and we'll see why in a minute. So this now allows us at the moment to get into platforms one, two and three. If we wanted to, we could put a crossover track here and here to increase it to four and five, even here, six, here, seven as well. We could probably reach all of those um in fact you know what why not let's go let's go crazy uh or at least to six anyway so that's fine and the next thing that's really important to do well let's dump the coach yard in it just goes at the end of it like that and yeah really important that we have a signal here facing to the station and an arrival sensor and what the reason this is important is it's going to automatically take trains that come out of the coach yard into the correct platform. So from here, you can see we can actually reach any of these platforms, which is really cool. So we covered half the station. We could put another one down here for this side if we wanted to, but at the moment, that's not a problem. So we need that coach yard in order to get urban transit contracts. And if you hover over this now, you should see that, I think it's that one, the two chevrons pointing upwards is urban transit. So that's now unlocked for this station. Not all of them will necessarily have um, urban contracts available. Uh, it looks like most of these allow them, so it might be okay. But um, yeah, we've got that all set up, we're ready for it. Now I'm just gonna use the contracts manager to um, reduce the noise and just offer us urban transit contracts. So we're just going to do that. Um, I mean, I could say I could put in, you know, Wrocław as a mandatory station, but I don't think I need to because that's the only station that's got a coach yard. Um, so it sort of doesn't really matter too much. They're going to come up on the red um, dispatch office when they finally come out. So let's just fast forward a bit and see if it's going to offer us one of these. And then, um, yeah then I'll show you how they work. One thing to note here, it's worth reminding people about, it's not really related to urban transit contracts, but anytime you make changes, you do have to keep an eye out for any sensors that have been affected. So if you add extra points, departure sensors can break and you get that little orange icon up there. Uh, arrival sensors are usually pretty good, so they're, they're not normally an issue. Routing sensors can be a problem, so that's a routing sensor there. Uh, so just keep an eye on those. But the other thing that can happen is if you have a perpetual circuit like this and you upgrade the track over that perpetual circuit, the perpetual circuit gets unlocked and you end up with a section like that. But of course, you don't necessarily notice. And then, of course, a train comes along here and it sits at a signal and you have to then look out for those um, little warning badges coming up. So. Just be careful of that, especially when you're doing something big like this, make sure you haven't broken anything. So anyway, as you can see, we've been offered a an urban transit contract. So let's just play again. What is special about a transit urban transit contract? Well, first off, it has to start from a station that has a coach yard. So hence, this has been offered here because we have a coach yard. Secondly, it has to start and end at the same station. So wherever I go from here, I need to make sure that I come back here. 
and thirdly you get to choose which stations are visited by the urban transit train you can see here that you're being offered 2400 bucks per unique station so obviously you can't just go here and back and here and back and here and back and here and back and get loads of money but you need to make a decision whether you're going for money in which case you want to maybe visit four or five six stations or whether you're more interested in getting the red points for running an urban transit train or even trying to get your steam rewards for moving i think there's one for a hundred um, trains once you've moved a hundred of these you get one but also notice you get offered different amounts of money so that's only offering us 800 so who wants that one this one's going to be 2400 so how does it work well you click on it like a normal contract and you can choose the platform that you start from now i'm not using platform one at the moment and it has uh, in fact it doesn't have a departure sensor so i will need to add that but let's start on platform one which is fine and then you get to choose which stations you visit in order to get back to the same station on the same or a different platform it doesn't actually matter so you just need to make sure of course that you can actually route from where you want to go to so for example if you went into that platform up here then you wouldn't be able to reverse the train back out again whereas if you went into this platform you could go that way or that way so just be mindful of that a little bit so we could say right first point is here and then to add a station you just hit the plus and let's say we can start by going to um, Brokhoff and we'll go to platform four um, and it will actually go up that line and then go down into platform four and then from platform four we'll reverse and let's say we'll go to Mikhailov up here uh, platform yeah two is probably fine but we might look at platform four as well and then maybe the next one we'll go to let's go down to um, Mukobor platform three is fine and then if we go back then to here so which is is pick the wrong platforms but we'll start with that so um, sometimes when you add things are found with the the planner it sort of changes platforms when you're not expecting it so just be careful about that um, so platform one to platform four so at least get the platforms right to begin with and then I think we'll go back to platform one again might as well um, because we can treat platform one as a platform that's going left to right on this map so there is our whole route and at the moment the route itself is fine now the only thing we need to do is check for these overlaps so we can see already that at that time in Mikhailov um, there are trains on platform two and four so all we need to do is bump that along a little bit and you can see we're now in a, in a space so we could use platform two or platform four doesn't matter then when we get to Mukabor, platform three is is okay so that's green and then we get back to platform one that's also green it's always worth remembering that you only see the conflicts at the stations so there might be a conflict at this junction or this junction which you're not going to see on this but you know as you know from other trains you just have to sort of try it out and see what happens so that part of it is fine so we've bumped it back a little bit but I need to do a few more jobs before I actually start it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to accept that and then I'm going to pause it so there's also something else really important in here and that is deciding where the finished trains go to because once the transit train gets around its loop and back it will be set to finish now it won't follow regional trains stabling sensors that won't work so what we do instead is we point to the coach yard and we say any finished trains i don't like the um the ui here it's quite difficult to see but that one's now ticked any finished trains can go back to the coach yard and that's what will take care of taking the train away because it works a bit funny with the transit trains i'll show you when we start it running you won't see um, one train going backwards and forwards it, it ends up generating multiple trains but as long as you put the ones that are finished back into there then back into the coach yard then they'll just all disappear the other thing that we want is we want to auto dispatch urban trains in fact we want to auto dispatch both of them five minutes is probably 
a bit much um, three will probably be enough but you can see here it's already generated some urban trains for this contract and it will use them I think it generates four per contract or maybe five and I think it cycles through them but um, yeah anyway that's that so I think this is ready to go and you can see here that now that I've enabled auto dispatch it's actually dispatched that train for me which was expected at platform one now I've already seen a problem here because that train needs to go across this track to get to that platform and the tracks occupied by here so what I might do is I might add an additional track across here in fact I could probably do that now and it might automatically use it just to make that bit a bit easier there we go so it's done it automatically so that's going to deploy transit trains notice it's sort of like a little tiny train and I think the top speed is only 100 so it's slower than a commuter train but a little bit faster than a freight train but it's certainly not quick so that will go there and it should do like just like a normal commuter train it should wait there uh, let's just speed this up a little bit it should get a departure to go this way which it has and hopefully the rest of this once you've checked your sensors and things will just work exactly as expected will get up to here it will go to platform four obviously if you're going to turn around in a platform like this you need to just make sure there isn't anything else um, expected on four but that's fine we've got a few minutes before the next train now that's arrived a bit quickly so I think I probably messed up the timetable a little bit somewhere 32 yeah so I think I moved one of them and it's now made this big gap six minutes so I think what I need to do uh, yeah this is going to be tricky I'm going to need to um, change that after it's done I think because I think it will mess it all up otherwise oh that hasn't reversed why isn't it reversed so that departure sensor hasn't worked properly which is annoying so let's see if the rest of this is going to work and then I'll investigate that but yeah for the most part it works like a commuter train it's supposed to be able to reverse direction automatically and everything else um, but like I say the main key point is that it needs to come back to the station it started at and you need to remember to set the departure sensor to send finished trains into here and we'll see if that bit's worked in a minute and there we go that's how a transit train basically works um, and then in the next hour you'll automatically get another one and it will just carry on so anyway, we're going to look at the advanced arrival sensor so the advanced arrival sensor gives you extra functionality on the standard arrival sensor you've used this before it's quite straightforward to set up by default you click the sensor the signal and the station and then it basically just does what it does as the train approaches if it is scheduled to call at a platform on the station that it is linked to then that arrival sensor through the signal you select will send the train into the relevant platform now that's all very well but you might have noticed or you might not that when you set up a time table for a train as well as choosing a platform one two three four in the case of uh, Osobovice um, you can also choose that which is any platform and you, if you choose that at the moment before you have the advanced arrival sensor it's not going to be much good because what happens is if you say any platform and it's approaching say here then the standard arrival sensor won't do anything with that train so your trains until you have the advanced arrival sensor your trains have to have a platform set or if you're really desperate you would have to set the platform manually but if we look at a station like this Ozov, uh, um, it's only four platforms and at the moment I have it set up so that the top two uh, sorry the top platform is to go left to right the second platform is right to left third one left to right bottom one right to left so one way that way that way that way and sometimes what happens is once you start getting lots of um, contracts in place you might find that your trains are kind of waiting here 
because the train in front has stopped and it's taken 30 seconds or a minute or whatever to 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 go away and so what you might kind of think is well i've got a, an available platform platform one so it would be nice that if platform four the normal platform was occupied and i just tell it to use platform one instead it's not going to take any more time and it's just going to help reduce congestion so that's what the arrival the advanced arrival sensor is designed to do so if we go here and we choose that and we upgrade and it kind of tells you what happens here so you can see here the sensor does not route trains that do not have the station in their schedule that's the same on the basic arrival sensor as it is on the advanced one um, so that doesn't change anything but effectively what it says here is configure which platforms are used for routing of trains that arrive at any platform and passing trains that arrive at any platform so if we look at um, one of the intercity trains for example we can see that some of the stations like here is actually a passing train but it still has a platform um, and that's obviously good news because you kind of want it to go through a particular platform usually but actually here we could say um, I want it to go to any platform at Popovica. Uh, in fact, if I just let's pause it, so I might be able to demonstrate it on this one. So I've upgraded to the advanced sensor. That train is going to, by default, platform four at the moment at Ozobovica. So let's click on this arrival sensor. And now that the advanced bit's unlocked, you can see here that you can choose um, stopping platform. So when platform is not scheduled, is not scheduled in other words if it's set to any and I'm stopping then what we could say is I want to go to platform 4 or platform 1 so that's fine and then likewise what about if I'm passing through so this is obviously a separate option so I can say well also I'm happy for you to pass through on 4 and 1 as well so I'm just going to set it on this one sensor at the moment but you can see it's quite straightforward click the stopping trains um, at a selection of platforms obviously in this case we've only really got two that we can choose from we don't really want to put trains into the left to right platforms because then that's just going to cause more congestion but obviously if your station like um, Vorstwef down there has got like 12 platforms or something obviously you could include a lot more but you can configure it separately so platforms to stop at both of them platforms to pass through both of them on the the way that the points or turnouts work is going straight ahead is faster than taking the diverging route so if you do have trains that are passing through especially the intercity ones you might want to say well if they're passing through i want them all to go through platform four whereas if they're stopping i'm happy for them to go through either so you you could do it like that if you wanted to um, but that's all we have to do and if i click this and we'll change that platform here to be any you see when you do that it sort of changes the sort of um, the picture a little bit but um, I think that will apply now because the train has only just left but we'll find out now what happens um, but when we get to that sensor here platform 4 is obviously available so it's going to choose that platform anyway um, but that should work just as before but it's also got that extra ability because I've set it to any platform. Hopefully, this will now trigger. And you can see there, even though it's set to any, it's got to there, it's chosen a platform. And I'm not sure if it's clever enough to know that this platform will be faster because it's straight across the points compared to that one or whether it just chooses the first one. But that's all there is to it. Um, I'm not sure necessarily that I'm going to use it in lots of places if you've got a station like here it's only got two platforms it's there's not going to be uh, any use for it so yeah if you have a station like um, smarts off which is just two platforms there's not really much use and likewise ten platforms at Wrocław you um, you might not really need an advanced arrival sensor because most of the time it'd be easy just to choose maybe platform five and six for the non-stopping trains because they'll be the fastest platforms and otherwise just choose a platform and it's usually good to have some kind of system so I use platforms nine and ten for the trains to Kletchner. Um I you or I was using top two platforms for the transit urban transit trains three and four for trains to Brokhov um, and then five and six for stations to Smarzov. 
snap them in I'm not using these so you might not really need it in a big station I expect on some maps it might be a little more useful than others um, but here I mean you can still see how it works so hopefully that explains that and that also brings us to the last of our level 2 tier 2 red upgrades any questions then obviously just dump them in the comments below